What is up guys? Welcome back to another GeekerWatt video and I'm honestly so excited for today's build. Not only is it a $1500 build featuring Ryzen 3rd Gen and an RTX 2070 Super, but I'm building it inside my favourite case ever. The Corsair 280X, which is just glorious. So without any further ado, Let's get straight into it. But first, a big shout out to Squarespace for making today's video possible. Build a beautiful website at the link in the description below. The final thing I wanted to mention before I start putting this system together is that I'm going to be planting 20 trees as part of Mr. Beast's hashtag team tree initiative. And if this video hits a thousand likes in the first week, I will double that and plant 40 trees. Head to the link in the description below, learn more and save the planet. But let's take a look at the CPU. You can't of course have a CPU without a motherboard and this is where my killer combo comes in. The AMD Ryzen 5 3600X with a base clock speed of 3.8 GHz and a boost of up to 4.4 with 6 cores and 12 threads. It, it's just a beast. Paired with the MSI B450M Pro VDH Max. Now that max designation is really, really important. It means this motherboard supports the latest third gen Ryzen chips uh, out of the box. You haven't got to faff about with any uh, BIOS updates or anything like that, which just gives you peace of mind and not all motherboards have that luxury at the moment. Today's video isn't meant to be a tutorial, a tutorial, a tutorial per se, uh, but installing the CPU is easy, line up the socket on the motherboard with the socket on the chip and it should just drop into place. AMD socket requires no force, so just pop the arm down, I mean you saw how easy it was. While our motherboard is nice and easy to access, we're also going to install our memory or our RAM. I opted for a 16 gigabyte kit of Corsair's Vengeance Pro uh, RGB. Now this particular kit here is white, so we'll fit in nicely with the color scheme of our build. Installing memories, once again, really, really simple. Find the notch on the memory, line it up with the notch on the motherboard, and a bit of pressure to both sides does the job nicely. AMD Ryzen 3rd Gen isn't quite as bothered about super fast memory speeds, but nevertheless, the 3000 megahertz clock speed of this kit uh, is nice to have. Now, one thing I'm actually doing here is just checking the manual for our CPU cooler installation. And it turns out that Corsair allow you to use the pre-existing uh, mounting brackets that come uh, on top of your motherboard, which is gonna save us loads of time and loads of hassle, which means we only have one more thing to do before moving this motherboard assembly, if you will, into the case. And that is to install our M.2 SSD. This is the XPG, uh, so by ADATA, Spectrix, S40G. Now, this mem this SSD, sorry, is so, so exciting because it's actually RGB. I don't know if the camera could sort of quite see that. It is just incredible. Aside from support for NVMe uh, 1.3 and 3D NAND flash that makes this drive an absolute speed beast, it's gonna look great in today's build. All that's left to do then is dive in the motherboard box and find this absolutely tiny screw that we need to secure our M.2 SSD down with. Although that is slightly ironic, I'm using a Samsung SSD um, screwdriver pen to install an A data SSD. Okay then, sorry. And here it is, the source of so much of my excitement for today's video. Now, full disclosure, Corsair sent this out like a year ago, but they have no idea I'm using it for this build. I just was thinking, what system do I want to put together? And then I saw this case and thought, I've been putting this off for far too long. Just while I install the motherboard in the case, a couple of key features about the Corsair 280X RGB. 
It's available in two variants. One costs like $60 more and includes uh, the two Alal RGB fans at the front, which I would recommend because it's a pretty good deal. Uh, and the latter doesn't. One slight downside is that it only has four PCIe covers at the back here and not five, which means high-end motherboards with a full length slot at the bottom aren't gonna be a great idea, uh, but with multi-GPU setups fast going out of fashion, it's not an issue. The case is also a really, really nice form factor. I love the size, uh, but on a desk, it can take up more room than a large sort of ATX tower because of its width, but that's just, it's just powerful for the course, really. I suspect there is um, an extra standoff that I hadn't realized was installed that I don't need. So just to be, just to err on the side of caution, I'm gonna take the motherboard out and double check. My sneaking suspicion there, oops, was indeed correct. So uh, let's fix that. Now the motherboard is in the case, we're gonna move on to the CPU cooler. In order to do so, we're probably gonna want access through the top of the case just to give us the maximum number of options. So removing this top glass panel can't hurt anyone really. When it comes to mounting the radiator in this case, there are a couple of options available to us. We can either go up at the top, or what I think might work better is adding it at the front, uh, taking advantage of these two existing fans here, and then using the white fans included with the cooler to add extra airflow and RGB at the top of the chassis. So it is a bit more of a long-winded way of doing things, but let's take the front panel off and give it a go. Okay then, the radiator is at the front and I think that actually looks really, really good. I'm gonna put the two white fans that you get included with that Corsair radiator as well at the top so we can see how that looks. So I have encountered a minor issue whereby the tubes are blocking this extra fan at the top. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip the radiator around to the tubes at the bottom, and then hopefully the problem should be solved. Yes, so we seem to have fixed the issue for now. We're gonna have the, uh, the challenge of getting the graphics card in in a moment, but we'll worry about that when it comes. Now that our system is sort of starting to get there, we're gonna install the power supply before you get too many cables back here. Uh, we may end up removing this two and a quarter inch drive bay as it won't be needed, but we will be installing a, a two terabyte Seagate Barracuda hard drive uh, in here later, so the top one sadly is uh, necessary. Now in terms of said power supply, I keep coming back to this unit time and time again, and for a few key reasons. It's very efficient with an 80 plus gold rating, it's got a five year warranty, and it's fully modular, meaning you only plug in the cables you need. And the affordable price tag for a 650 watt unit, and bear in mind of course the high efficiency means we've got usable well over 600 watts. This is a great choice for any build up to sort of 1500 to $2,000 depending on the exact components. As with all the components in today's build, I will link this and everything else uh, down in the description below as well for a range of different, that's the wrong way around, for a range of different uh, regions and retailers if you want to learn more or pick uh, some of the parts up for yourself. All 
right then with pretty much every single component in. All that's left to go is the big one, aside from the case of course, because this is my favourite. The NVIDIA RTX 2070 Super. Now, this is one of the main differences between the build I did in this case about eight months ago uh, and the one today. Aside, of course, from the new Ryzen chip as well uh, and the white edition CPU cooler, so quite a bit has changed. This is the Founders Edition RTX 2070. And what, what's cool about the Founders card is you can check your hair in the... the <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, what's cool about the Founders card is that you can buy it directly from NVIDIA, who are now retailing this in Best Buy, I believe, over in the US. And it's the cheapest, like, RTX 2070 Super, like, full stop, which is incredible and amazing. And I don't know if it's going to fit. Oh, just about. It's just about going to fit. So um, let's install this, then I'll run through a couple of the key features. In what may well be the jammiest GPU install ever. I mean, let me just install these quickly. With that being said though, it does look really, really good. All that's left to do now is a little bit of cable management, perhaps pop an RGB strip in the front, and then the system is complete and ready to play some games on. But first, a message from today's video sponsor, Squarespace. From blog websites, portfolios, online stores and more, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that lets you build a beautiful online presence. Fully responsive, completely customizable modern templates let you showcase what you or your business does best front and center. Great SEO tools make sure your website gets seen and full social media integration plants you firmly in the 21st century. The built-in commerce tools open the door for a world of selling possibilities with unlimited products, subscription support, multiple payment methods including Apple Pay and countless currencies, the possibilities really are endless. Head over to squarespace.com to learn more than I could possibly fit in a minute. And for your free trial, and then when you're ready to launch your beautiful site, head to squarespace.com slash geekawatt, the first link in the description below, to save 10% on your first website or domain. There really is no easier way to get up and running with a website for you or your business, with the all-in-one marketing, analytics, hosting domain, and website building tools from Squarespace. When it comes to gaming performance on a machine like this, I'm happy to announce that 4K is indeed the sweet spot. Now, 1440p to get some really high frame rates uh, is also an option, but at 4K, the likes of Overwatch on high and ultra settings, consistently achieving 60fps and more, look absolutely fantastic. It's a similar story jumping across to uh, Rainbow Six Siege, running the benchmark mode uh, in both 1440p and 4K yields some great results. And it's really that dilemma of 1440p with a nice bit of frame rate and ultra settings, or 4K with high settings and maybe anti-aliasing tone down and that kind of thing uh, to hit that 60fps mark. Moving on to a slightly older game that everybody loves, GTA 5 is another title where this system is really going to excel and exceed all expectations, really. That's not all though, Forza Horizon 4, my favourite game of the year so far, though it's it's just so buggy trying to get it work sometimes, I, I don't understand, is another title whereby this system just performs so, so well. We have of course also got Call of Duty's Black Ops 4 where this system just absolutely shines. Another one of my uh, preferred games from this year, and I will actually be updating this list to include, of course, the new Call of Duty Modern Warfare as well, and it'll be interesting to see how that performs forms on a system like this. Of course, a notable mention needs to go out to ray tracing. This system does of course support NVIDIA's ray tracing technology, hence that RTX designation. And this card is happily powerful enough to motor through with a bit of ray tracing support as well. Now, ray tracing does have quite a big performance hit on your frame rate, um, although it does provide a far superior visual experience. And in a build recently, I went on record to say that an RTX 2070 Super and 2080 Super 
uh, is where you want to look for ray tracing. 2060 Super is going to work as well, but when you get to the 2060 kind of level, for me it's too much of a performance sacrifice. Though I should, um, no promises because I haven't got this firmly penciled in yet, but I should have some more ray tracing build oriented content coming soon, where I dive into is it worth it and what kind of results are you able to get in those latest, of course, supporting AAA titles? With that being said, though, I think that covers all of the key benchmarking bases. If you enjoyed today's video, a big old like rating, get subscribed and ding dong the notification bell so you never miss another Geek or What video. Hit me up on the social media channels on your screen now and remember, a thousand likes and I will plant 40 trees as part of Mr. Beast's team tree um, kind of fundraising event, shall we say. As always though, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next Geek or What video.